Hello. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, my name's Roshi. Um, that's how you pronounce it there. Um, Irish spellings are silly. Um, <laughs> And so, uh, a little bit about me. Um, I'm Scottish, I'm living in London at the moment. Um, I've gone all over the place in tech. I started as a tester. Um, I moved into game design in the games industry. I then left the games industry and became a tester again. Then project management, and now I'm a product manager. Um, and I have suffered from anxiety and depression since I was 12. Um, I have had several breakdowns in my life and I'm hoping to try and like use that to help you all a little bit. Um, I want to echo what the last person um, said around if there's anything in my talk that makes you feel uncomfortable and you feel like you need to leave, please do just get up and go. I won't be offended. Um, and so, yeah. So, um, I left school when I was 16 um, due to poor mental health um, and decided that as someone who was in a fragile mental state, uh, the games industry would be perfect. Um, and so, at the age of 18, I joined a company that will <laughs> a company that will remain nameless to protect the guilty. If you Google me, you can find out quite quickly where it was. Um, but let's just say they developed a fairly negative reputation, and it was completely justified. So um, I was there for nine months, doing the standard 18-hour um, days, six days a week. Uh, and um, realized that perhaps the games industry wasn't as supportive and exciting as I had first thought. Um, and that was when I had my first work-related breakdown. Um, I quit my job. I spent every penny that I had running away to Japan for a month. And then I came back and I worked in a bar. Um, and. I've forgotten, aha, uh -huh. okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I worked in a bar for several months um, and that could have been it for me in tech. I could have just walked away from it. Um, but I met a lot of really amazing people working in tech. Um, and I decided that the things I loved about working with tech and working in tech um, were more important to me than running away from it. So I decided to move back into tech um, and I decided that I wanted to become more, move into more of a leadership role in tech. And when I say a leadership role, I don't mean I wanted to be the boss because I'd be awful at being a boss. I don't like telling people what to do. I think it's weird. Um, I want to be everyone's friend. I want everyone to like me. And um, I'm really nervous. Um, <laughs> and. You know, when I thought about the kind of person that I was and the kind of person that I wanted to be and the kind of people that I wanted to help, I realized that I was never going to be the kind of leader that I saw in tech and in the games industry, the, you know, angry old white guy, um, <laughs> sorry, um, you know, pointing their finger and creating these blame cultures and telling me that I had to work 12 hours a day and I had to pour every bit of myself into my work and I had to be strong and I had to be emotionless and I had to be something that I just wasn't. And as I was moving through this and trying to find my feet and trying to help people, I realized that my leadership style couldn't be like that and it wasn't going to be like that. And going through my whole life, I was always this sort of I cry, you cry kind of gal. Um, I want to help people to the dearth of anything else. Um, and something that I would often say is that empathy was my superpower. Um, the ability for me to use my lived experiences to put myself in the shoes of someone else was something that I prided myself in and something that I wanted to foster within myself as I helped other people through tech in, over the last decade. And it worked well for a time. Um, 
whenever I had mentees or people that I had offered to help, I would pour everything into helping them. I would be their rock. I would be the person that they call at 3 a.m. I would be the person that was always there. And it turns out that that isn't very sustainable. Um, in the middle of last year, my closest friend and also someone that I work with very closely uh, had an experience that is not my story to tell, but it was completely and utterly beyond the realms of any lived experience that I have ever had. And I couldn't help. I was there at 3 a.m. I was having the dinners, I was holding her hand, I was letting her cry on my shoulder, but I couldn't help. And I realized that in trying to help, I'd been co-opting her grief. And without realizing my privilege as someone who hadn't had those lived experiences, it affected the way that I was helping her. And not only was I hurting myself, I think I was also hurting her too, because she didn't necessarily want a solution. There were no solutions to what had happened. There were only crying into the void and hoping someone's there to listen. And so that happened. And while that was happening, I was also pushing at work for more responsibility and finding it very difficult because that empathy was still there and still strong, but I had been pouring it into this bottomless pit of grief and I was spent and I was tired. And I started going to therapy, which I'm, I really love my therapist. Um, I have a great relationship with him. Um, and at the start, that therapy was paid with, for by my work. Um, but every six sessions, I had to go back and ask for more. And it got to the point where um, I realized that <clears throat> they were waiting for me to tell them that I was fixed. Um, but funny fact, I'm not broken. Um, I am a whole human being who happens to think slightly differently from other people. And that need for me to be fixed and once again coming up to this feeling from people that I should be different from what I am and always have been um, caused me to have another breakdown. Yay! Um, I didn't eat, I didn't sleep, or when I did sleep, I'd sleep for 18 and a half hours. I relied on medication to get me through the days and the nights. Um, and when I got back to work, I realized that something had to change. Um, I left my job. I moved into the job that I'm at now um, with a group of people that I was very honest with and who have given me more respect in a few months than I've had in several years prior. Um, and in this new job, I realized that when I was talking to people and helping people in the way that I always have done, I needed to change a little bit about how I was doing it because I was hurting myself, I was hurting others, I was co-opting people's grief and I was using my privilege in a way that I should never have been using it in the first place. So that's when I started treating empathy as my sidekick. It's the Robin to my bat person. Um, and it's something that um, I learned in therapy um, around going into difficult issues because something that I got told by one of my old bosses was leave your feelings at the door. Um, and I don't know where that door is, but I've never found it to leave my feelings there. Um, but I can't. Feelings are context. Feelings are everything. Emotion is everything. We are human beings. We aren't robots. We all feel in different ways. So you. You, you can't leave your feelings at the door, because if you're leaving your feelings at the door, you're just talking to smarter child. And, but I realized that while I would never be leaving my feelings at the door, I possibly had to leave other people's feelings at the door. Not the door in, 
but the door out. So what I did was something um, that was a visual cue for myself and that probably seemed a bit weird to the thing to the people that I was talking to, but if you'll excuse my language, for me it was better to look crazy than go crazy. Um, and so I actually, the first time I did it was with the same friend that had been having all these issues where we had another discussion and, you know, she, she stopped crying and she was feeling better and I felt like I'd helped her. And usually what I'd do is I'd go away and spend the next four days obsessing over what I could have done differently to help her more because there's always more that you can do. And instead, I put my hand out to her and she sort of tilted her head. And she said, what's that? And I was like, this is yours. And she's like, you don't have anything in your hand. And I'm like, I do. These are your feelings. I've put them in this box. It's very pretty. I've wrapped them nicely. And I'm going to give them back to you now. And she was like, I mean, OK. Um, <laughs> but bless her little cotton sock, she took the box from me. And you know, we hugged, and we said her goodbyes. And I wept home and it was like, I just breathed out. And I had been holding my breath for so long that that physical, visceral, these are your experiences, these are your feelings, and I will be there to work through them with you, but they are not mine, was something that helped me immeasurably and gave me the capacity to help more people because I'm not sitting here absorbing, I'm pouring myself out to the people that need it, but not at the detriment of myself. So a few takeaways from this. Empathy isn't a superpower. It's a state of being. It's part of who you are. And most people in this room will have above average levels of empathy because you've all had lived experiences that are different. Because we're all marginalized people. We've got different things that we can bring to the table. And it's part of who you are. It's not magic. It's something that you can bring. And it's a tool that you can use. And further to that, you matter. You should always think, can I handle this? Is this okay for me? I had a really bad habit of putting myself last. And in the long term, that could have killed me. So now, when I go into these situations, sometimes I'm going to have to say, I'm really sorry, I love you, but I just don't have the ability to deal with this right now. And that was really hard because, you know, these are my friends, these are people that I care about, these are people that I work with, but sometimes trying to help when you're not able to look after yourself wouldn't have the desired effect. Take the feelings, wrap them up, give them back. It sounds really silly, um, but, and I know that it's not going to work for everyone. It's one of these, like, um, CBT sort of things, and not all of those work for me. Like, I don't have a happy place that I can go to when I close my eyes and someone says, think of a wonderful beach. I'm like, I'm drowning! <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't always work, but give it a go, see what you think, and if someone goes, ugh, then, you know, they weren't worth helping anyway, so you don't need to give them their feelings back because you've stopped caring about them because they're rubbish. Um, <laughs> maybe not quite that. I'm a bit, huh. Uh, and first, last one that I wanted was a comment um, from AlterConf London, a talk that Kai Jacobs did on empathy. If um, the video is not ready yet, but when it is, I would highly suggest that you check it out. It's amazing. Um, but Kai said that empathy isn't learned, it's earned. And from his perspective, it was something about how you can't just read about empathy in the book and go, I've got empathy now. It's something that you build up over time, over experiencing hardships and experiencing the human existence that all of us have and, and need to live. But for me, on the flip side, people have to earn your empathy. Not everyone deserves or wants your help. And sometimes trying to help everyone means that you aren't able to truly help anyone. Um, so I probably rushed through that. That's everything that I have for today. I just wanted to say thank you all for coming. I love 
AlterConf. I was part of AlterConf London. I'm so honoured to be a part of AlterConf Berlin. It was kind of a personal um, goal of mine to be captioned by Mirabai. So, like, this is amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And um, if any of you want to ask any questions or have a chat, I have my little ring card. I'm really bad at approaching people, but I'm happy to be approached. Um, but if we have a really deep conversation, just expect me to go like that at the end. <laughs> Thank you very much.